J. Robert Oppenheimer is remembered as the father of the atomic bomb. He was a pivotal figure in the Manhattan Project, the United States endeavored to create nuclear weapons during World War II. And he was present for the Trinity Test, the first nuclear detonation on Earth. Oppenheimer notably channeled Hindu scripture following that incident. Now I am become death, he declared, the destroyer of worlds. The United States dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima, Japan, less than a month after Trinity. Then three days later, another on Nagasaki. The war ended quickly, and the world was left reeling in the aftermath of those two massive mushroom cloud explosions. They'd never seen anything like them before. Nothing comparable has ever been observed since then. But what if that were to alter in the not-too-distant future? Welcome to Z, and today we're answering the extraordinary question, what if America dropped another nuclear bomb? Do you require answers to the big questions? Then why not subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one and ring the bell for more thought-provoking content. The nuclear bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki on August 6th and 9th, 1945, killed over 200,000 people, the vast majority of whom were civilians. And, while data vary, it is believed that more than half of those killed perished instantaneously or within the first 24 hours. The atomic bomb's ruthless power is unlike anything else that humanity has ever imposed on itself. The use of nuclear weapons is now strictly prohibited. Thousands of active nuclear warheads remain on Earth today, despite their numbers declining since a peak in the mid-1980s. The majority of the world's leading political powers, including the United States, Russia, and China, now control a nuclear arsenal that is many, many times more powerful than the early, devastating weapons used on Japan. The possibility of nuclear war is arguably less discussed among this generation than it has been in the past. However, this could be because it has devolved into a depressing and disturbingly inevitable background noise. All of this is to say that many countries in the 21st century have nuclear weapons. With the right set of commands, multiple world leaders could launch another bomb at any time. The President of the United States, in particular, has the final say. There are many purpose-built command centers in the United States, including one in the basement beneath the White House from which the President might launch an attack. The so-called nuclear football, on the other hand, is more famous. This is a small, portable briefcase that is supposed to be carried by a nearby aide whenever the president travels. Also known as the atomic football, the black bag, and the black box, it contains launch codes for a mobile attack. As well as confidential documents outlining emergency places for the president to visit. There are few items more important to U.S. national security than the nuclear football. Naturally, many of America's weapons are kept in the United States. However, some of the most strategically important are kept elsewhere, such as in Europe. The United States possesses nuclear weapons sites in Germany, Italy, and Turkey, all of which are within easy range of most other nuclear countries, including Russia. While the stereotypical image of nuclear war depicts missiles being launched from remote coastlines, over oceans, and into target areas, that would not be the case in reality. There are numerous potential hotspots all over the world map these days, checkpoints and territories for either side in any potential conflict. And, inevitably, millions of people will be caught in the crossfire. There would be very little time between the president issuing the order and the rest of the world witnessing the carnage. So, what comes next? There would almost certainly be counterattacks, then counterattacks to those counterattacks, and so on. The bloodiest war in history could happen in a matter of days. Perhaps only a few hours. When the United States bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it marked the end of a terrifying technological race to be the first to develop nuclear weapons. America won that contest, as evidenced by the unimaginable destruction. No one could retaliate in kind at the time. Today, however, the diplomatic landscape has shifted dramatically and multiple countries can respond. 
If America dropped another nuclear bomb on any target, really it would be putting itself in immediate danger. This cruel and unnerving point of equilibrium became known as MAD, or MAD, Mutually Assured Destruction, during Ronald Reagan's administration in the 1980s. Decades have passed since Reagan's presidency, but the situation remains largely unchanged. And perhaps Robert Oppenheimer's comments, I have become death, the destroyer of worlds, are even more pertinent. Because, if they were the ones to press this particular button, would any political ties remain unbroken for America? Would any other state be willing to back whoever lighted this specific fuse? Yes, a nuclear attack would cause physical destruction, but how would diplomacy, or lack thereof, play out? If another nuclear bomb is ever deployed by anyone, will it mean the end of globalization? Would those who escape the likely conflict have to struggle to restore civilization as it once was? Would they want to, all things considered? Oppenheimer's phrase destroyer of worlds can be taken literally, referring to the smoking, choking, toxic wreckage left by a nuclear strike. However, there are more oblique meanings, such as the long-term wounds and scars on society and the human psyche. Having said that, there's little doubt that the immediate situation would be dire for everyone involved. Consider the destruction and devastation that would be left in the wake of the initial barrage of missile launches. Perhaps some of those missiles would be intercepted before impact, perhaps some would not strike with the expected force, but many, probably the majority, would reach their target and effectively disintegrate it. If America, or anyone else, dropped another nuclear bomb, millions of people may be dead within a week. Perhaps a couple hundred thousand from the initial act of aggression, perhaps a half million or more if a large city is struck. But then multiply those harrowing figures by two, three, or four to account for just trading blows in the nuclear age. Nuclear war has the highest potential death rate compared to any other option. This would not be a slow, strategic battle with soldiers lost in the field. Instead, it would be a series of fast and fiery explosions detonating in densely populated areas over and over again. Of course, there would be different, and varyingly horrible, long-term consequences. Many people believe that if a nuclear strike leads to nuclear war, it will result in a nuclear winter. According to some models, this is a large-scale, global environmental event that could even result in a temporary blocking out of the sun. Food that is safe to eat and water that is safe to drink become increasingly scarce commodities in a world plagued by fallout. With radiation lining the soil, entire sections of the map would be dangerous to walk through. Even cities that were not directly hit during the war will have become highly unstable and dangerous places. Our previous structures and towers now stand only as relics of a bygone era. Clearly, this scenario could play out if any aggressor made the first move, not just the U.S. If any nuclear power detonates their first nuclear weapon, the same terrifying chain of events could unfold strike, counter-strike, war, and winter. America is unique in that it is the only country that has previously used nuclear weapons. It is impossible to say whether this means they will be used more frequently in the future. But the rest of the world knows that the finger in the U.S. is always poised. The infamous nuclear football, which is carried around wherever the president goes, is clear evidence of this. So, what do you think would happen if America detonated another nuclear weapon? Do you believe it will ever happen again? Let us know what you think in the comments. For the time being, we can take solace in the fact that there are international laws and regulations in place to prevent the worst from happening. We can only hope that they continue to do well. What are your thoughts? Is there anything we left out? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date on our latest content.